Hi, this is Melissa, the insurance exam queen, and today we're going to talk about the PAP, the personal auto policy. So these are the parts of a PAP. Uh, pers they, they abbreviate personal auto policy as PAP, so do expect to see that in your studies, um, PAP as a personal auto policy. So <clears throat> they're actually um, A through F, but they rarely have ever test on E or F, but we will talk about those. So part A is liability. This is the coverage that is going to protect the other person. So if you are driving your car and you crash into someone else and you cause them injuries, you cause them damage, part A liability is what pays out to them. So liability is for the other people, the other people in the car, the other people that you hit, their medical bills and their property damage will be covered under part A liability. So liability is for other people. <clears throat> part B is medical payments, sometimes abbreviated as med pay. And part B medical is for you. It's actually for the people. It's in your car. It's for you and your people in your car is Part B medical payments, sometimes abbreviated as MedPay. And the biggest point for medical payments is remembering that it is per person, per person. That's actually one of the things they test you on a lot on the exam is remembering that Part B is per person. They won't even like tell you that in the question. They'll make you, uh, they'll ask you the question and you have to remember that. They'll say like, you have $5,000 in medical payments. You hurt three people. One was injured at eight, one was injured at seven, one was injured at four, and it'll ask you how much will pay out. And if you forget that it's 5,000 per person, you will get that answer wrong. It is 5,000 per person, not total. So each individual in your car is able to get up to whatever limit you have for medical payments. It's usually a small limit, 3,000, 5,000, maybe 10, maybe 12, but usually it's a very small limit for medical payments. And one big thing, <clears throat> if you're taking the medical payment, or if you're taking the, the exam with the auto on it, you're also gonna probably be taking the exam with homeowners on it. And part F is medical payments on homeowners, and it's for other people. But auto, it's for you. But other than that, medical payments between home and auto function exactly the same way. It's for an actual medical injury, not pain and suffering. You actually need a medical bill. You may have to submit to physical exams as often as the insurer requests. And it's good for up to three years and it is per person. But the biggest difference between auto and homeowners is that auto med pay is for you. On homeowners, it is not for you, it is for guests, it is for friends, it's for visitors, it's for other people who visit your home. Auto medical payments is actually for you and the people in your car. Um, part C is known as uninsured or underinsured. So this is when you are in an accident with someone who hit you and they either have no A or not enough A. And so you use your own insurance to cover your medical bills and that is part C. Part D is damage to your auto. This is where you're gonna get your collision or your comprehensive coverage. If your car is damaged or broken in the accident, that's what you're gonna get on your car is collision or other than collision. And collision is anytime you hit something, you crash into a tree, collision. You crash into a building, collision. You crash into another car, collision. The only time collision is not collision <laughs> is when you hit an animal. So if you crash into a deer, a little bunny, foo-foo, whatever, it's not collision, it is other than collision. Other than collision is like mother nature, mother earth kind of things, earthquake, theft, vandalism, flood. Flood is covered in auto, not homeowners, but flood is covered in auto. <clears throat> it's all the things that are kind of out of your control. Whereas collision, you're, you're driving the steering wheel, you're in control. Other than collision, known as comprehensive, is things that are out of your control. Now, part part E is called duties after a loss. These are the things that the customer has to do after an accident, duties after a loss. The thing to remember there is you have to call 911 in the event of a theft or hit and run. And then, and but they, not a lot of exams ask you about part E, which is why I didn't write them. But just in case they're in your text, I wanted to throw them out there. And then part F is general provisions, basically just rules of the policy and how everyone is supposed to behave. 
it is imperative to memorize at least A through D. You should be able to say part A, liability, part B, med pay, part C, uninsured, underinsured, part D, damage to your auto. That should be an immediate uh, memory for you. So part A, liability, part B, medical, part C, uninsured, part D, damage to your auto. That should just be memorized for you and say it to yourself over and over again until you have it memorized. Because a lot of the exam questions are simply just going to ask you what is part A on an auto policy? What is part B? So just knowing the names of the parts, that's four questions right there that you can have on the exam. So this was a brief overview of the different parts of an auto policy, which you should memorize. If you need any help or assistance at all, make sure you drop a comment. You can also email me at insuranceexamqueen at gmail.com. And I do offer boot camp classes where you can attend live or watch the recordings so you can get a fuller, deeper understanding of this material. Have a fantastic day. I am sending you all the positive vibes that you pass your exam. Woo!